Hey everyone, it's Dr. Sue Cancer Vet. I'm at the Veterinary Cancer Center where I work in Norwalk, Connecticut. Everyone has left for the evening and I'm here by myself. And I just wanted to hop on and tell you um, some questions that I answer all the time, call them myths and misconception about chemotherapy in pets. And I know guys, it's really, really scary. Or you're not sure what to do, but I want everyone to know some of these tips and I hope that they'll help you as you're trying to decide what to do for your pet. I have a couple of other vlogs that can help you with chemotherapy side effects and supplements supplements and things like that. But I want you to know there is reason to be hopeful and it is important that we educate ourselves about the different options that we have for our pets. Thanks for joining and I hope that you find this helpful. If you do, please tag, please share, because again, we need to spread information and share hope and knowledge about chemotherapy in pets. All right, so do you know what they are? What are the myths and misconceptions of pets and chemotherapy? Here we go. All right, you guys ready? Let's talk about the chemotherapy myths and misconceptions. I'm gonna break them down for you. So the first one is one of the most common questions that I get asked, and that is, is chemotherapy gonna make my dog or my cat sick? And the answer is in general, no. And so what's really important to remember is that chemotherapy in dogs and cats is not chemotherapy in people. I've had family members go through chemo. My grandfather, two aunts have gone through it and I've had some friends go through it and they get really, really sick and there's a lot of side effects in general. Obviously everybody's gonna be a little bit different, but it's estimated that 80% of dogs and cats going through chemotherapy don't have any side effects, which is phenomenal. And in general, most of the side effects are gonna be mild to moderate and self-limiting. What does that mean? That means in general, they're gonna get over those side effects on their own. In vlog number 38, guys, you can go to my YouTube channel, we'll throw a link below. I have a whole um, info video about chemotherapy side effects and medications that we can use to minimize those side effects. But it's really important to know that severe complications, severe side effects are very rare in dogs and cats getting chemo. So again, they handle their chemotherapy phenomenally well. So that's the first myth and misconception is that chemotherapy is gonna make my pet sick. Okay, what's the second myth and misconception about chemotherapy? Is that my pet's gonna be spend all the time in the hospital? No, that is not true. So in general, guys, less than 5% of chemotherapy patients will get admitted to the hospital for side effects. I always say, if it does happen to your dog or cat, you probably won't care that I told you that the side effect was really uncommon, but I do take some comfort in knowing that most dogs and cats going through chemotherapy are not gonna spend additional time in the hospital on fluids, feeling sick and punky. So they're gonna go in, they're gonna get their treatment, they're gonna go home and usually eat just as well as they did that morning as they did on the day that they get chemotherapy. So again, we want our pets to be outside of the hospital doing whatever it is that makes them enjoy life. So for some dogs, it's doing agility and going on hikes and for some dogs it's just sleeping on the couch with us while we're watching TV or maybe just a stroll around the block but again severe side effects are super uncommon in dogs and cats going through chemotherapy and it's really rare for them to get hospitalized from chemotherapy side effects before we finish this one it's really important to know if your dog or cat does end up being hospitalized due to chemotherapy side effects maybe dehydration or very low white blood cell count it's important to know that most of those, and I'll be honest guys, it's usually dogs, not cats. Cats have less side effects and less lower hospitalization rates. But if they get hospitalized, they look really punky when they're dehydrated and not feeling well. Give them a day or two in the hospital. You'd be surprised how well they can bounce back from those chemotherapy side effects. And we can still give the same drug that caused hospitalization, but we're gonna lower the dose. And again, we're gonna be even more proactive with our maybe nausea medications or vomiting medications, antibiotics and things like that. So it's super uncommon, but if it does happen, it doesn't mean that your pet can't get any more chemotherapy. So that's a good tip to know as well. Okay, what is myth number three? Myth number three is that your pet is gonna lose all of their hair. And that's 
really not a crazy thought, right? Because we know that people tend to lose their hair. We have continuously growing hair. And I'll be honest, guys, I'd be pretty devastated if I lost my hair. But the good news is, is that most dogs and cats will not lose their hair due to chemotherapy. There's a few exceptions. So cats will lose their whiskers and sometimes even those whiskers by their eyes, but they will grow back and they do fine. So most dogs do not have a continuously growing hair coat and they will not lose their hair. Sometimes it thins out a little, but most dogs look as fabulous as they're going through chemo as they did before. There are a few exceptions to the breed, so talk to your veterinarian or your oncologist. Um, some of the common ones are Old English Sheepdog, some of the Terrier breeds, specifically Scotties and Westies, and definitely Poodles. Um, I've made some Poodles uh, pretty, they, have, they don't completely lose their hair, just some pretty pathetic looking patchy areas. The good news is the dog doesn't look in the mirror and the dog does not care. So again, it's really just something I warn the owners because we like how adorable our pets are, but in general, it's not gonna affect their quality of life and their hair will grow back. Think about a lot of the poodle mixed breeds or the you know the golden doodles, the labradoodles and stuff like that. So if your dog has some poodle in them, that may make them a little bit more susceptible to hair loss than some of the other breeds. But again, most dogs are gonna look just as fabulous as they did on the day they walked into my clinic. And most kitties are gonna do well and do fine even if they lose a little bit of their um, whiskers. All right, guys, what is the fourth myth and misconception about chemotherapy? And I have to say, this is probably the one that people dread the most for their pets. And this is the, the category of gastrointestinal side effects. But the one that we're really most concerned about, right, is that my pet either is gonna be puking as a result of chemotherapy or they're gonna lose their appetite. Another gastrointestinal side effect is diarrhea. And in general, guys, I talk about these in vlog number 38. There'll be a link below. Again, you know, medications were very proactive. So we give uh, nausea medications with some of our chemotherapy drugs when they're getting chemo in my office. And then you're gonna go home with that and a nice detailed instruction treat on how to use that. But the good news is 80% of dogs and cats don't have side effects. And if they are gonna have them, they're usually mild to moderate and they're gonna get over them even if we don't use those medications. But what I have learned is we can minimize the impact um, of these, you know, of these side effects. And again, guys, there's a lot of great drugs that we have at our disposal. Serenia, Entice, Zofran, which is a human one that we can use as well. And then I just learned that there's a great new topical medication for cats called Meritaz. So we've known that we can use Mirtazapine. So now there's a topical one that you can put on your cat's ears every day, alternating ears. The good news is most dogs and cats are not going to be having severe side effects, uh, specifically vomiting and loss of appetite. I will just make a little note. Sometimes their taste buds change, guys. And so what they were eating before, they may not wanna eat. So they can completely change what they normally eat. Or some days they're gonna need a little bit of coaxing with maybe some chicken or some other things like that. But again, you know, the vomiting is not what we're imagining. They're not sick all the time. And that's just really, really good news. What is another concern? So the fifth myth and misconception that pet owners have about their pets going through chemotherapy is that they're gonna be immunocompromised. Why would we think that? It's actually a really reasonable thought because in people, they often get very low white blood cell counts and they're often told to be careful and they're at risk for infections. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the risk of a severely low white blood cell count leading to hospitalization and a systemic infection called sepsis is very uncommon. So we do a really good job monitoring our patients as they're going through chemo and hopefully preventing that infection. How do we do that? So if I'm giving a drug that's really likely to lower the white blood cell count, I'm gonna have the dog or cat come back so I can check the white blood cell count. And I personally often use antibiotics the first time that they get a drug that could potentially really lower their white blood cell count. Every oncologist is a little bit different, but this is just how I do it. So I'm gonna give the drug, the pet's gonna start the antibiotics, and then I'm gonna check that low white blood cell count. If it gets really low, I may actually add a second antibiotic and I'm gonna adjust that chemotherapy dose. So the next time you come in, that pet's gonna get a little less chemotherapy so we can adjust it. 
Some studies actually suggest that we want their white blood cell count to get a little bit low because it means we're actually giving kind of a good therapeutic dose of chemotherapy. So we're gonna watch their white blood cell counts very closely. Sometimes I'm gonna delay treatment, but again, take home message is they're not severely immunocompromised and they can continue to do all the things that they did before they started their chemotherapy protocol. number six or myth and misconception so this really has to do with how dogs versus dogs versus cats right oh so you know how do they handle chemotherapy and i always tell people if i made you guess dogs cats or people who tolerates chemo the best most people are surprised to hear do you know who it is it's cats, right? So a lot of people think, oh, cats can't handle chemo. They're small little creatures. You know what? They have less chemotherapy side effects than dogs. So that's really, really great. Um, you know, again, dogs and cats as together handle chemotherapy better than people, but it's just a little bit reassuring to know that our little kitty cats in general do better. Unless they having GI side effects like a gastrointestinal, small intestinal lymphoma, lots of my kitties don't even need diarrhea medications so as they're going through. But again, we wanna be very proactive, so talk to your oncologist or your veterinarian about what medications your kitty needs and your dog needs um, to hopefully minimize side effects. And don't forget to check out Vlog 38. I think I mentioned there's a Vlog 38 that talks about my favorite medications to help minimize and prevent chemotherapy side effects. Tip number seven. I hope I haven't lost count. What is tip number seven? So this is one of the myths and misconceptions is that all chemotherapy protocols are the same and that all cancers are created equal. So, you know, how we treat lymphoma in dogs is gonna be different than hemangiosarcoma and osteosarcoma. So there are some cancers that we're gonna treat with weekly chemotherapy like lymphoma. In general, osteosarcoma and hemangiosarcoma is every three weeks. And most of our protocols are injectable, but there are some chemotherapy protocols that are gonna require um, every three week visits or oral chemotherapy. So, you know, it's really, really important to talk to an oncologist about the protocol that they're recommending for your pet and what else is going on with your pet. You know, are they a diabetic? What other, you know, constraints you may have on getting your pet in for treatment? So again, there's often a range of options, which is really, really nice. Um, but again, you know, different cancers have different chemotherapy protocols. And I think that that is nice that there's some flexibility for there and for some cancers i have way more options than i do for other cancers you really want to find out the information and guys seeing a specialist does not you know sign you up for any form of treatment just go get the information i'm always happy when you go home think about it and then come back because then i know that you made a nice educated decision what sucks is when we don't go and then you say oh Dr. Sue, I wish I met you three months ago, or it probably would have had a better prognosis had we treated it or diagnosed it early. So again, be proactive, get the information, and then talk about it with your family and then decide what's best for you and for your pet. My final myth and misconception for dogs and cats going through chemo is that people think it's a contract. I mean that if we start chemotherapy, you have to keep doing it. Absolutely not. In my practice, you pay as you go. So if you decide to stop chemotherapy after the first, second, or third dose or whatever, that's okay. But I have to tell you guys, most of my clients who decide and elect to give their pets chemotherapy after meeting an oncologist and discussing it with me, they're usually really, really happy with how their pets do. Sometimes they say, I can't believe you're giving chemotherapy. It's one of the reasons that I chose to start doing Facebook Lives of chemotherapy and recording them and putting them in my vlogs. Speaking of, please check out my YouTube channel. I have, I think I'm up to about 40 YouTube vlogs, so video blogs of pets getting chemotherapy, and you can see see them come in, leave, wagging their tails. But again, most clients I say, if you're just thinking about it, let's give a dose or two. Let's see how your dog, let's see how your cat handles chemo. And most of my clients keep coming back because they're so surprised how well their pets are doing. And they say, I can't believe they're getting chemotherapy. So again, chemotherapy is not a contract. Talk to your veterinarian, talk to your oncologist and see what protocol is right for you and know that you can decide, you know, if you change your mind, that's okay. All right guys, a little bit of a bonus. So I just wanna remind you, 
have I reminded you too much about vlog number 38? So vlog number 38 is gonna tell you about some medications that we can use to minimize chemotherapy side effects. But I also wanna remind you, I have chemotherapy information sheets that you can go to my website, Dr. Sue Cancer Vet, and go to the pet owner resource section and you can download. So we have helping your pet through chemotherapy. And then I have a couple of information sheets about chemotherapy as well. So one on regular chemo and this one's on metronomic chemo. Also guys, other bonuses, a little bit of a side note, but you can get skin maps there so you can keep track of your pet's lumps and bumps because you know I feel really passionate about that. So thanks for joining me. I hope you found this helpful. Chemotherapy is, uh, often not as bad as we think it is. So I think it's worth learning about and getting some information. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. And if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. As always, it's an honor and a pleasure to help you through this journey.